Hello and welcome to Wall Street Training's Accounting and Financial Statement Integration Module. My name is Hamilton Lin and I will be walking you through this presentation. Please note that these materials are copyrighted and may not be disseminated or reproduced without express written approval and consent. And we have this term down here called EBITDA. EBITDA stands for Earnings Before Interest Taxes, Depreciation and Amortization. It is simply arrived at by taking operating income or EBIT plus the DNA amount. As we briefly talked about before in the WorldCom example, DNA are non-cash items. So let's quickly now take a look at exactly what we mean by these EBIT and these EBITDA numbers. So keep in mind the following. EBIT is our earnings before interest and taxes operating income. This is what I will call, this is your core sustainable recurring profitability from core operations. Give yourself a little bit more room to add to this in a second. EBITDA is what we'll call a proxy for cash flow. Proxy for cash flow. Now, think about that folks. EBIT is our core sustainable recurring profitability from our core operations. This is the core dollars that we are able to generate. What we do best, let's say we're Walmart, a retailer. What we do best is to sell stuff and buy stuff and then resell it at a higher price. What we do best, our core operating activities, this is the amount of money we are able to generate from that. This excludes the cost of the interest expense because that is a capital structure related decision, not an operating decision. Now we come to this term called EBITDA. EBITDA, we start with EBIT, operating income, earnings before interest and taxes, and we add the two largest non-cash expenses, depreciation and amortization. Why do we add these numbers in here? Because we're trying to get what we call a proxy for cash flow. If you ask them very old school bankers and some old school financial analysts, proxy for cash flow, this EBITDA is exactly the same as the cash flow number. They're trying to figure out what is the core sustainable recurring cash flow from the entire company's operations, and that is key. However, you look at this term called EBITDA, you will never find it on an actual legitimate income statement from revenue down to earnings per share. You will not find a term called EBITDA. It's actually a term that financial analysts made up. And if you do a quick search on the internet for EBITDA, good or bad, I'm sure you get three hours of midnight reading on everybody's opinion on why it's good or why it's bad, the vast majority saying it's bad. But that's because they don't truly understand what this term is trying to symbolize. Let's think about this. EBITDA is a proxy for cash flow. If it's a proxy for cash flow, the question is, why are we gonna sit there and make up a term and proxy for cash flow? Why can we not go to the cash flow statement and grab the cash flow from operating activities number? Now, we're going to skip ahead of ourselves to the cash flow statement just a little bit here. But let's look at this. If our cash flow from operations, CFO, is really starts off with net income using the indirect method. Net income plus non-change in non-cash items of which DNA is the biggest amount plus or minus change in working capital. Now, it is fair to say that we should take cash flow from operating activities and compare that against EBITDA for the very reason that EBITDA includes the word EBIT and it's, uh, uh, you know, includes the operating income, so all operating activities per my definition here, from core operations. So now the question becomes, folks, and I want you to think about this for a second, what is the difference between CFO and EBITDA? There are three main differences. What is the difference between cash flow from operating activities and EBITDA? And when you look at the formula on your, on your screen right here, you can clearly see that the first thing that the difference between CFO and EBITDA is this working capital item because this working capital item does not appear on the EBITDA. So that's the first clue. Now you look at this, DNA, depreciation, depreciation and amortization have both been included in CFO as well as EBITDA. They've both been included so you can't say DNA is different because they're both the same. So now, going back to our definition of EBITDA over here, we look at this thing and we say the first item is our working capital, as just mentioned. However, net income has already been reduced by interest expense and taxes, whereas EBITDA specifically is before interest and taxes. So what we're trying to say is that this I and this T, the IT, the interest expense and taxes on EBITDA, that's the second and the third reason why. Now, why is that an important distinguish, distinguishing factor? It's very important because now I'm going to ask you the question that would try to hopefully clarify the importance of EBITDA. Who has a claim on the net income? There's one party who has a claim on the net income of, these, of this company. 
and that's simply the equity stakeholders. Why is it the equity stakeholders, the shareholders? Because the interest expense has been paid off so the debt holders are satisfied for that current period. The government is satisfied because now you've paid the taxes. Therefore, the equity holders are who is left and they have the claim 100% to the net income. But you take a look at EBITDA. Who has a claim on EBITDA? There are three parties who have a claim on EBITDA. The first party, as we mentioned, is the equity holders because they haven't gotten paid yet. They are the ones who have a stake on the net income. Now, the debt holders also have a claim on EBITDA because they have not yet been paid as well as the government. These are the three stakeholders. So now I want you to modify your definition of EBITDA as follows. EBITDA is a proxy for cash flow. And here's the important part. To the entire company before the effects of capital structure and leverage. Leverage, of course, simply being the use of debt. Again, this is the definition of EBITDA that I want you to use. It is a proxy for cash flow to the entire company before the effects of capital structure and leverage. Whereas net income is simply going to, or CFO technically, is going to be only to this equity stakeholders. So what we're always trying to capture is, how is this company doing from a profitability and core ability to generate profits and cash flow from the entire company perspective? In our corporate valuation and corporate finance module, we will go through the differences between how to analyze the different mix of debt as well as the capital structure and the implications on valuation. But for now, sticking to these accounting terms here, we're going to look at the EBITDA and we're going to look at the EBIT as well. Because the EBIT, I want you to do the same thing, add to that the end of this definition that we added for EBITDA. We will also say EBIT is a core sustainable recurring profitability from core operations to the entire company before the effects of capital structure and leverage. You want to make sure that you also include to the entire company before effects of capital structure and leverage in EBIT as well. Because again, what we are trying to impress now is the fact that we want to see how is the company reporting, how is the company's profitability before the changes of, before the effects of capital structure have been taken into account. Why is that important? because different companies will have a different capital structure. I may decide to issue all debt this time, I may decide to supplement with equity or vice versa or any combination. Somebody else will make a different decision. Therefore, they'll have a different interest expense. And once you have a different interest expense amount, your net income number is gonna be different. So that's why we wanna look at what is the core ability of the entire company to generate profit and cash flow, hence the term EBIT and EBITDA.